Alright. Now uh, we're gonna keep going. We just started. We're on a third flashback. You guys should be able to remember this from... What is it? Oh boy, it's been a while. Um, this, I believe, is from Gears 3. You come to this base and you gotta hold the line. It's a hell of a mission. And... I believe we're just sort of a nobody. It'd be so, I think it'd be wicked if... Us being this nobody, and we're partaking in this madness and all these previous missions... Is if like somewhere in the background or something you'd see like Dom and Marcus and the team from when you play the game, they roll in and you know you, you see them in the background doing their own thing. And, but nope, you don't get to see them. You just reenact the fight from a different angle, from a different time, whatever the case may be. Like it's kind of cool you got to work with Dom and overtake that base. But aside from like I said, just this beginning part, it's this is it. Like I think this is more of a built. A build on peace, like why it got to be so peaceful, why it's like this. I don't uh this doesn't really play much relevance in it later. Like when you start becoming JD and you start venturing around, you go to the you go to this city to recover I don't wanna give too many things away. I'll, I'll play this as if it's a new commission, but you're playing as JD when you enter the city so you gotta recover a certain item. That certain item is essentially what you need get to use an horde and blah blah blah. Um, they don't touch on anything, like, it's just a moment of peace and cogs have just kind of become the enemy. That's what I got from this. Ooh, I don't want to I'm not a fan of Boomshot. I don't like those one, two hit guns. I like, I like, I like using and needing them when I need I use Boomshot, I get, what, five kills? I use the Lancer, I can get, I don't know. Uh, a few more than just three or four. You know, right now it seems like a good idea because I am taking damage. Now I am on normal, I believe. That's four difficulties. Casual, which I'm assuming more if you want to just kind of breeze through and experience the story. Which I don't know why you go casual. There is a few times where you do split up, but I mean, like, the AI, the AI, the AI is pretty well done. They do react to you more so than anything else. So if you go down, they're set to try to get you up, which is helpful. I don't know where that went. See, like right there, Hoffman. He came out of his hiding, he had an enemy behind him, but his AI told him to get me up and get me up first. Which, honestly, is probably the smartest move. But even like playing co-op, it was fun. But playing solo right now, like I'm having near as good time. Now, would I try horde? I don't think so because that would be absolutely absurd. Plus, in the horde, you're by yourself unless you're playing multi. Now, one of my complaints is in the old gear games, you can play solo, you can play with a buddy, and you go split screen. And I was cool about it, and they kept that still. I could have a friend and we could play split screen. And now we also have this crossplay, so I could technically still play with Kami. But my beef now is we were trying to set up a horde. Just both of us play horde, but you can't. For multi, you have to go online to their servers. There's no. And this, we believe, is when. The queen died, and so did the locust. But against all odds, a brave group of soldiers, led by Marcus Phoenix, finally ended our locust nightmare. Dearly, I wish Sergeant Phoenix could be with us here today. Stop and think about the men and women whose sacrifices guaranteed our survival. Thanks to them, we fought through the long twilight. We built a new prosperity. The world the new cog has ensured knows no war, no suffering. It's a world of safety of family, a world finally at peace.
strange. You'll never guess who that is. But you do know him. Hey. You coming? Just give me a sec. For a butterfly? Yeah. Look. You know how this little guy starts out? Trying to stay alive. <laughs> True. But if it survives, and most don't, it finds a way to change. The little larva becomes a chrysalis. Inside, it destroys and rebuilds itself, changing its color, its shape. It gets wings, claws. It slashes its way out of its cage, and then... And then it's new and beautiful. You shouldn't have come. Save your breath, JD. That one? <laughs> She's a mother's daughter. She really is. I really am. We used to protect Cox settlements. Now we're about to raid one. Is that ironic? Technically, no. <laughs> Raiding is what outsiders do. Until you two showed up. Now, pff, boring. Better bored than dead, old man. There's a difference. Huh, no alarm. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're not gonna be bored. Dead, on the other hand. That's not the security alarm. Oh shit, wind flare! We can take cover inside the settlement. To the wagon, all of you! Go! Yeah, I'll play the prologue for now. Um, as soon as this finishes. There you go, Coalition. See, it's not an epic game. But they did a pretty good job. The wall's closing! Oh, 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 oh. Oscar, hurry! We gotta beat that wall! Now, is this game worth buying? I'd maybe wait. $120 is a little much. Unless you're a really diehard fan. Like, even the $79 is a little much. I don't feel like Ford has too much of a replayability. Alright, here, let's return to main menu and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, I don't feel like it has a lot of replayability. Maybe online is a little better. But so, if you want to go Horde, you can go Standard, Host Private Match. And if I go standard, that's going to just join me up with people. If I go host a private match, it's going to connect to their servers. I can't just play with me and a friend. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Because me and my friend, well, me and Kami, wanted to play. And the pain in the ass of it was, is we had other people joining our game. One was somebody on his friend's list. But then the next guy was somebody off the friend's friend's list. And we didn't know them. They were just... They just held us back. It was, it was pretty brutal. Um... Okay, now, if I go to... Customization. Nope, sorry, not customization. Store. If I go to store, this very much reminds me of... Like, Dragon Age Origins. You buy these packs. And if you look in the top right, it says how much I have. So this pack is a thousand. It's an operation pack. Gives me everything you can read on the left. Horde, bo uh, horde booster, so only used for horde versus elite, blah, 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 blah. These help you at the beginning of matches. But now I have to use this currency and buy these packs. Now you can play a pretty vanilla version of the game. You get, you know, so many basic characters and you get so many basic skins and guns, blah, blah, blah. But this is where you really get to customize your guys. But now this is the thing I don't like what we're doing in games is the fact that Due to the fact now that we have to buy these, and some fans, who knows, maybe they'll go nuts and maybe they'll buy the 15 packs. But, it doesn't make sense to me. Why are we doing this to our loyal fans who keep buying our games and we want to keep coming back? This seems like a money grab. Now, I don't know if it was Coalition, 
there you go, maps, you can, so you can buy maps too. Um, I don't know if it was Coalition that decided to put these things in, or Microsoft, I don't know. But, I got a vintage Dell I guess I can open. So anyway, you buy it, you can open it, and you get these, so you can reveal, reveal, or you can just say reveal all. But this shows you everything you get. So now I unlock these items, and when you really start looking at the characters, there's a lot of items, because you can buy different guns, uh, sort of skins for guns, you can buy different skins for the players, you can buy boosters for matches, you can buy a lot. So you get these packs, and you'll get doubles, and if you get doubles, here, I'll show you. If you get doubles of these cards, you can upgrade your previous cards. So let's go Horde. Um, the character I am, I got that from a box. Kami didn't. Kami's using a different guy. I think he's using Zombie Dom. But so you click on your Retro Lancer, and I could two guns. Or, I mean, two skins for this gun. Click on this one, three skins. And well, you get the point. But now I open up one of those cases, I'll maybe get one skin for the gun, one skin for a different player, because you only get so much. Then you got all these emblems. Like, it's essentially like they're trying to squeeze more money out of you, and this is what's annoying. So if I went into Horde and I launched it, you can customize all your guy and your guns and what you want to start with. But then you also get this thing called classes, which, here I'll just, I'll host a private match. I'll show you what it's like. So right here, you can see it says scout skill. Now you click on that. And these are all your skills you can get, which, once again, these are buyable. You can get them in the packs. You see how on the bottom right of this deposit bonus, there's a 1 that shows me the level. This is level 2, this is level 1, this is level 2. On the bottom, there's a little bar right beside that 2, 1 of 3. So if I get 2 more of these cards, and then I have 3, I can upgrade to level 3. That card will be a level 3. So you essentially can buy your way to being better, which is, in my opinion, just absolutely... Ass nine. There's, there's no difference between some kid who gets his mom's credit card and somebody who pours time into this game. So now this is where you can change your class. And once again, you can see I'm level two scout, which actually leveling up these takes a long time. Um, leveling up your profile is a lot quicker. I don't actually know what leveling up your profile does for you, but as you're playing Horde versus. You build up a little bit of money, a little bit of money, a little bit of money, and then you can buy those packs. And I just, I really detest packs in games. I don't want to pay to win. Now, you don't have to pay to win. You can you can play, but it's not going to be the same experience. It's going to be very vanilla. One thing I thought was actually really interesting was Rainbow Six Siege. They came out a while ago with like a very, it was like 50% off or something, but it was like 29 bucks or 19 bucks or $20. But you could buy a version of the game that came pretty vanilla, came stock with like two guys, you got a bonus, a couple thousand dollars, so you could go buy one guy or buy two more guys and buy a couple things. And that was cool. So for a reduced price, which I ended up buying it, you can get almost like a, a lighter version of the game, but it's still the full game. And as you play the game, you can unlock the other characters. And I think I unlocked one more character and I kind of got bored of it because it actually just ended up turning into just free-for-all and you just every match you just kill each other that's all it was but I like that it was reduced price reduced game but you still get the full content of the game whereas this it's like you do get the full content but you just get such a vanilla version but for the same price and I just I don't like that I really don't like that I really wish that was a practice that stopped um you got a whole bunch of different versus modes see once again connecting to servers um, just standard stuff. Uh, let's see what we got here. Let's see, contacting servers. Actually, let's get out of here. Match created. I can't even cancel it. So this is my complaint to the game, is the fact that it all has to be online. It all has to be through servers. Synchronizing connection. Oof, I think I'm starting to get harper. Here. So as you can see, it's not a whole lot of a community. 
I've got four guys on my team, and then I got five swarm. So I'm guessing we're gonna fight the AI. I don't know if the future plans to have guys start playing as the locust, so that way you know you can do both. But I don't actually want to be in here, so let's get back to my main point at hand. I wanted to show you guys modes. Core modes. So you got team deathmatch, standard. You got dodgeball, which is actually a lot of fun. As you can see in the bottom left, uh, eliminate the opposing team to win. Every kill will bring back a dead teammate. So essentially, don't lose any teammates. King of the Hill, King of the Hill, same thing. Arms race is pretty cool. I really liked arms race because you start with like a ridiculous gun and you work your way up to pistols. Guardian, which is not bad. I like that mode too. And then you got War Zones back again. It's not bad, but once again, you're on servers. So there's a lot of like wait times, there's a lot of lag, there's a lot of just guys constantly coming and going. It's nice. I, I like before when you could set it up, you and a friend, and you could just play together against AI. But anyway, this game is what it is. If uh, I get a little more anxious, maybe a little later or something, I'll try playing through Chapter 1. If that's something everybody wants to see or whatnot I don't know anyway that's it for me for tonight so have a good night and I will talk to you guys later